Hello and welcome back friends. So in this lecture we are going to add some logics and interactivity in a sine form. So here we need logic for our these two buttons. Means the next button will be available for user or when we have next input in our form. Our previous button will be available for user when we have any previous input in our form. After adding some logics for this button, we are going to add interactions with this button as well. So here we are going to add click event in both of our buttons. So whenever user clicks on a particular button, then a function associated with that button will execute. Okay. So before adding logic and interactions, we have to add something called data attributes in our div holding a class of item in our HTML, and which will tell uh, what width we need in a particular case of progress bar. Okay. So means when this act class this div have the class of uh, active then we need a width of progress bar to be 33.33 percent and when this div is active we need the width of 66.66 percent and when this div is active we need a width of complete 100 percent okay so now open skip tag in the bottom of a body element and first here we are going to capture all the elements we have to interact with and we'll store them in a variable so first of all I'm going to select active div element so document dot query selector and the active class and after that we are going to select our progress bar so progress equals to document dot query selector and we are going to select a class called progress and then these two actions button so let prev button for previous button holding a class of dot prev and then the next button okay so after that we are going to create logic functions for our button so first of all I'm going to create a function called sprev which is check for the previous button availability for the user so function is prev and using this active div selector we are going to check if this div if uh, the current active div has any previous element sibling or not if it has any previous element sibling then we are going to show the button so we are going to do something like pre button dot style dot display and we will set it to inline block and if it doesn't have any previous element sibling sibling so we are going to set it to display none pre button dot style dot display and we are going to set it to none and same we have to do for the next button as well so copy this line of code and paste it down here and instead of this previous we have to select next and same here and same here so now in order to use these functions we have to call them so here I'm going to call both of the functions in the down so is pre rev and is next So now when I refresh the page, as you can see previous button is gone because we don't have any previous element. Okay, so now after doing this, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, add click events on previous and next button. So first of all here, I'm going to do something like previous button, I'm going to select previous button and then I will add event listener on it and then the click event 
and then the first one we're going to execute when the user click on this button so function so here what we need uh, first of all we have to capture the previous element in a variable called preview alem so we are going to capture it using act current active div and we are going to uh, using the previous element sibling property so if it has any previous element sibling it will be stored inside of this variable and then after that we are going to remove the active class from the current active div so active dot class list dot remove what we are going to remove we are going to remove the active div active div uh, active class from a div so now after that what I'm going to do I'm going to set active means this active as equal to our previous element okay so PREV element PREV ELEM uh, which hold our previous element of the current active div and then we are going to add the class active there so active dot class list dot add active okay so after doing this we need to increase the progress power we need to decrease the progress power because we are going to the previous step so how we can do this so there is no difference between the increase and width we only need to set the width of the uh, progress power as per this data attribute so we need to access this data attribute by, data attribute by some uh, properties of JavaScript element so what I'm going to do here I'm going to select my progress means this one variable and then I'm going to style it with a width and here what I need I have to give something in percentage and I will concatenate it with a plus sign and uh, here I'm going to capture the value of this data attribute so how I can do this I can select my current active div means the active div I set here that is previous element so active and then I could select and uh, then I can access this data width using something called attributes so active dot attributes so as you can see here we have two attributes in our div so this will hold the index of 0 and this will hold the index of 1 so attributes and then 1 and then a value okay so now uh, when we go to the previous link it will capture the width from this data attribute width and apply it to the progress bar uh, okay so now what I'm going to do here I'm going in the end I'm going to call these two functions inside of this add event listener as well so it's PREV and is next okay so same we have to do with the next button as well so copy this line of code down here replace the PREV with the next here as well and this PREV variable name also next lm and then all the things are same but here we need next as well so now everything is looking fine and now we are going to run our scripts so I'm going to reload the page so as you can see we have the input first input and the next button then when I click on it I have now the previous button because we have previous input called name and the next input called email and here we don't have next input because this is our final input in our form which is the password so I can go back as you can see progress bar width also increasing but there is no transition in the width so we are going to add the transitions through CSS so here I'm going to give a transition to this class progress so transition 100 millisecond is in okay now when I refresh the page as you can see now it has pretty much a uh, nice transitions which will so which will display as increasing progress bar uh, so let's give it 300 or 200 millisecond and instead of easing we could say something called linear so now maybe okay so it is fine 
so this is our sign up interactive sign up form so if you like this video please do subscribe this is my first tutorial so I did lot of mistake I know so sorry for the mistakes and thank you see you in the next upcoming tutorial bye bye